I want to respond to a video I posted on Instagram. The last video as of now that I posted. And it was uh, Aaron Judge from the top view. And I was showing what I don't like about Richard Skank's teaching of the swing. The method that everyone is basically copying out there in swing instruction is an interesting theory. It's cool. It's neat to see this come along in swing instruction. At least, at least, it. I mean, I want it to be that way. That some that one person has a an idea that's different and possibly better than anything that has come along, and everyone gives it a try. The swing of today. If you look at the average swing that a player utilizes today is more in line with what Richard Skank teaches. Everyone's kind of jumped on board, even though they don't necessarily realize it. It's just kind of in, even if you're someone who's not into swing instruction, when every other player in the lineup is swinging a certain way, it, it tends to morph your own swing. I mean, we see this. If we look at the 1980s, most people had a certain kind of swing. I mean, look at the, a big example, like a, a drastic example would be look at the White Sox of like the 1980s. Charlie Lau was heavily influencing the, the instruction culture in the White Sox organization. Okay. Danny, why don't you hit a few? Are you Michael McPhee? Okay, yeah. This is the way I showed you. I'm Charlie Lau. You ever heard of me? No. I'm the batting coach for the White Sox. And then that same, that same swing structure took hold in Boston because of. I mean, it's like it's like memes that are spread throughout these organizations. But right now, you know. Richard Skank's understanding of the swing is pretty much the only thing out there. Everyone's kind of blind to any any other theories or they listen to them and they don't quite understand. I mean, if you listen to the majority of guys who have a big voice out there in social media on the swing, you can't really understand exactly what they're saying. I mean, they just kind of provide a lot of data and, you know, and kind of advocate for a bunch of different positions but they're never really taking a stance on what do I believe about the swing and let me sum it up for you really quickly and succinctly and I, like I've said many times Richard Skank is doing that and he's getting ripped for it but I think anyone who's ripping him for things like not everyone can swing the same way and all that stuff. They're just dinosaurs. They're kind of having the old, it's always been this way, so therefore it will always be that way. And that mentality never got anybody anywhere throughout the human history. We've made advances because of the exact opposite mentality. That, yes, it's been this way, but look, it can be this way too. And I think that people don't really, right now we're at a kind of a bifurcation where people are, we're, we're just starting to understand that there is an actual best way to swing. And there's a lot of resistance to that. And Richard Skank on a large scale is the first one to really lead us in that direction, I guess. I hate to say it that way because I don't consider him my leader, but... Um, but he is right now at the forefront, and he's not the most personable, nice person, maybe not a great representative for this. But this is the, this is the split. This is the starting of the split that says, hey, wait, no matter what your size, I mean, for the most part, we're, we're all shaped basically the same way. Two arms, two legs, a torso. And we're not all that much different that it that there should be a, a different requirement 
for swing mechanics. I look at swing mechanics almost like, like a machine. You set the machine in motion and it produces a certain result. Factories that make, let's say, I don't know, tin cans. They're probably using the same basic machine to make to, in, at certain gradations of the process, if you will. So that's the way I look at swing mechanics. And I know people are saying there's no best way to swing. But I think that that is the old mentality. And they say that everyone has to find their own best way to swing or there are many different ways for different people. And I think that that's more of a, yeah, it's, it's clinging on to what's always, what there's always been in the past and therefore that's what it will be in the future. But it's also by people who just haven't really been curious about the swing. I mean, if you look at video, if you really look at video and you look at not just the greats, you're not going to see it if you just look at the greats. You have to also look at an equal amount of amateurs and uh, even as low as beginners and all the way up the ranks. And that way you'll see the patterns start to emerge. People are being way thrown off when they're looking at swing mechanics and somehow don't see the enormity in size of Aaron Judge. There are five skills of hitting as far as I see it. There could be more. I'm, I'm totally open to more, but I think these are the main five. Hand-eye coordination, swing mechanics, strength and speed, the mental approach, and pitch recognition. Obviously, hitting is not a swing contest. There are those other four skills that are involved. We shouldn't look at Aaron Judge and just assume that he is the paragon of good swing mechanics. That's a big mistake. Where are the smaller guys that are producing obvious increases in, in home runs? The only person I hear about is Aaron Judge. Where are the guys who are 180, 190, and going from clearly not a home run hitter to clearly a home run hitter. If we look at, I mean, look at what adding muscle did for Barry Bonds. Let's take Barry Bonds's, let's take his 1993 year where he hit 46 home runs. And let's just say that's his average number of home runs at that time. He hit 73 in 2001. That's almost 30 more home runs than he hit in his highest home run year prior to taking steroids. So it can add 30 home runs a year. I'm not saying Barry Bonds was not the greatest hitter of all time. There is an argument for that if you're going by single seasons. If you're going by career, I don't think there's much of an argument for that. But if you're going by single seasons, yeah, after he blew up on steroids, he had three of the very best years any hitter has ever had. 2001, um, 2002, and 2004. So for Barry Bonds, it added almost 30 home runs. This, as somebody who's interested in swing mechanics... That's my interest. This is not interesting to me. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to jump on Barry Bonds and say this is the guy we need to look at because his, his greatest seasons had more to do with building muscle. So let's carry that to, uh, to Aaron Judge. He is 40 pounds heavier than Bonds. 40 pounds heavier, by the way, and hit, in his top year, 11 less home runs. And now people say, well, if strength and mass is so important, why did Bonds hit more home runs than Aaron Judge? Well, again, you're saying that you're trying to say mass is everything and muscle is everything. I'm just saying it's a big factor 
And if you want to see how big of a factor it is, look at someone like Bonds. Look at someone like Sammy Sosa. You know, what is the difference in, in home runs? Grab their best home run year from prior to steroids and their best home run year from after steroids. Another reason why Judge maybe hasn't reached 73 is I don't think I don't think his swing mechanics were quite as good as Barry Bonds's. But again, there are other skills of hitting other than just swing mechanics and strength and speed. I think oftentimes big ideas within a certain industry come from outside the industry. I mean, look at Richard Skank, for example. He's not, he wasn't someone teaching the swing. That's, that's the way it almost has to happen. Any of these guys who are lesson givers and have been in the industry and coached this team and that team, they're entrenched in the, the paradigm that is out there. What they see as novel oftentimes perfectly resides within the paradigm that they have. They just don't see it. It's like a fish noticing that there's water around him. They're just swimming in it. And these swing coaches are just swimming in a certain paradigm out there. And you can't expect them to really have some trailblazing, groundbreaking idea. It's got to come from someone like Richard Skank, somebody outside the industry. I've always tried to stay outside of it. I just dip my toes in it from time to time, but I don't want to be in it. I know I can't deliver what, I'm, what I need to deliver if I'm within it. So I've always tried to stay outside of it. I may be just, you know, a, a very small whisper right now. But I'm betting that in time, what I have to say will be front and center in swing instruction. There has always been a correlation, an uncanny correlation of guys with dominant front arms and great hitters. I've talked about this. This is studied extensively. If you want to look at the papers, look at a, look at, uh, at a guy named David Mann, M-A-N-N, out of Virgé University in Amsterdam. And he has provided th that the, the data and shown us that you are many times more likely to be a major leaguer and to make the Hall of Fame if you are dominant in your front arm. Why is this, though? I mean, it's one thing to just notice this. But the key is, is what is, it, what is it telling us? What story is it telling us about swing mechanics? That, I believe, is the key. And that's the small opening that's going to basically lead to a, a flood. What everyone needs to do is change their structure to a certain kind of structure that I call body controlled. And people will say, this will seem weird out there in the paradigm that exists in swing instruction. Because within that paradigm, the idea that everyone has to find their own best way to swing flourishes. I'm saying that no matter what your size or body type or personality, whatever, there actually is a best way to swing. And this is maybe where Richard Skank and I agree on something. If you look at the best pound-for-pound -pound hitters, you see a, a lopsided tendency toward certain positions. You see more of this flattening of the barrel as they start forward. You see, you tend to see a longer, straighter front arm. This movement of the arms is in itself communicating something. It's communicating what really matters in the end, which is feel. What is the feeling? What these positions do for us is not enable us to force them into our swing. They're, they're true gift. 
these correlations to certain positions that the great hitters get into. Their true gift is the story they are telling about what a great swing feels like. And then the job of a swing coach, I think as we head into the future, is to simply get people to feel that feeling. That's it. It doesn't matter about why they think what they do and their story. What matters is that I can bring people to a certain feeling and how quickly can I bring them to that feeling and ultimately is that feeling the true dif- difference maker? And as we move forward in swing instruction, we'll get faster at leading people to a certain feeling. We'll get more precise as to what the, the key feeling is. Thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. Check out my website, theswingmechanic.com. I have my new book, Swing Like Griffey. also have my front arm training bat there. Thank you guys. See you next time.